Hello everyone. Uh welcome today. Sorry for the slight delay. That's the things with technology sometimes. So today we have Marco Padero Bova from Lancaster University who will talk about the sharpness of fusion systems conjecture. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me and thank you for the presentation. So yeah, as just said, I will be talking about the sharpness for fusion systems conjecture. I will start the talk uh, with uh, some definitions about fusion systems and Mackie functors. I will also say a little bit about them and what are some mathematics uh, they appear. I will then proceed uh, with stating the sharpness for fusion systems conjecture and uh, giving uh, some indications of why this conjecture might be true. Uh, then I will uh, make a list of uh, the approaches made for uh, solving such conjecture. And uh, if we are well on time, I will conclude with a brief uh, uh, idea or overview of uh, how I proved in December how this conjecture can is works for a particular family of fusion system, being the benson solomon fusion systems. Okay, so let's start with uh, the definition of fusion system. Fusion system were first uh, introduced by Puch as a means of uh, having a, a common framework between p fusion of blocks and uh, the p local structure of finite groups. As such, the more common example of a fusion system is given by taking a group G a silo piso group S of the group G and defining uh, the, a category FSG as the category whose objects are subgroups of S and whose morphies between two groups P and Q are given by conjugation uh, by an element in G that sends P to a subgroup of Q. And composition is as we would expect, uh, composition of morphisms. So C ix uh, composed with cxi goes to cix sorry ci is cy C cx is cyx okay so as a generalization of this fact uh, fusion systems are some categories that are behaved more or less uh, like uh, this category fsg i'm gonna not gonna enter into detail into the exact definition of this but basically, fusion systems also have objects, so groups of a finite P group, and morphies that behave uh, more or less like that. And these morphies are always uh, injective group morphisms. In particular, uh, we have that there is an action for every omset PQ of Q on the group P. Uh, that is, for every fusion system uh, F, and any uh, subgroups P and Q and S, and any morphism CX in Q, there is an action of Q in this morphism set that uh, sends X to say YX for an uh, element Y in Q. Yeah, that allows us to take a quotient of this morphism via this action by Q. And this allows us to define the orbit category uh, of a fusion system. So for a fusion system F, we define the orbit category OF of uh, this fusion system as the category whose objects are the same as the objects of F, that is the subgroups of S, of the finite P group S, and whose morphies are the equivalence classes or the morphies in F, quotient this action. So for every uh, set, we have a different action, and that gives us equivalent, different equivalence relations. Composition is as we would expect. Uh, composition of two equivalence classes is the equivalence class of the composition. So these fusion systems have been uh, used quite a lot in algebra and topology since uh, their appearance, and have a particular interest in uh, group representation theory in group theory for how they represent uh, the 
p local structure of a finite group. OK, any questions so far? OK, then I can go on and define Maki functors. So Maki function um, are algebraic structures that have uh, operations that resemble induction, restriction, and conjugation operation that appear in uh, group representation theory. They can be defined in many different ways over many different types uh, of categories. For example, the category of G sets with uh, G a finite group. We will come back to it later. Uh, uh, but in this situation, we are interested in a definition that is uh, due to dress and uh, which can be applied to our case of uh, fusion system over uh, my key function over fusion systems. So giving a fusion system F and a commutative ring R, we define a Maki function F over R as a pair of a covariant function M sub star and a contravariant function M superstar that go from the orbit category of F to the category of finally generated R models. We we'll usually see this category as included in category of R models. These uh, two covariant and contravariant functions satisfy the following uh, equation. First one, uh, they coincide in um, all objects in the orbit category of F. And the second one uh, is that they satisfy the Maki formula. That is this uh, very long uh, equation over here. So for every subgroup A, B, and C of, uh, of the orbit category, such that A and B are contained in C, applying first the covariant uh, function uh, to the natural inclusion from A to C, and later uh, the natural, the contravariant function to the natural inclusion from B to C is the same as uh, adding together the restriction that is obtained uh, by applying the contravariant function to the natural inclusion from a conjugate of B, intersection of a conjugate of B and, and A, then applying the conjugation, uh, Cx, after applying the covariant function, and then applying the natural inclusion. It is not necessary for you to remember uh, exactly this formula. Uh, for the purpose of this talk. Mm, and later on, we will see another way of interpreting it as uh, a way of making some pullback diagrams commutative. The interesting thing about uh, this uh, formula, this con construct, is that despite it looks uh, so weird, at least to me, it seems to appear in a lot of different uh, situations. It appears, for example, in algebraic uh, K theory, in the priest, it appears in representation theory. It appears um, if we take board centerings of groups, if it, take, it appears if we take group homology, and if it, it appears if we take group cohomology. The example of my key function that we will be most uh, concerned it with during the talk would be uh, in the cohomology Maki function, which is the Maki function whose contravariant part is the cohomology function of a group with coefficients in a ring R which will be FP in our case. OK, any questions so far? OK, then I will continue. And we can go on to stating the sharpness conjecture for fusion systems. So first of all, uh, recall that for any uh, function F between two categories C and D, we can see F as an object in the category DC of diagrams in D indexed by C. Uh, the introduction of this category allows us uh, to view the limit as a particular function in the case in which this uh, limit exists. So if limits of functions from C to D exist, then we can see the limit over C as a left exact function from uh, the category of diagrams in D indexed by C to the category D. 
Um, this uh, exactness allows us to define the left derived of this limit function whenever there exists enough injectives in the category D and therefore in DC. And therefore we can der define the nth limit of a function as the nth right derived of the limit function. Uh, as we will see later, uh, an equivalent way of defining this uh, is by seeing the higher limits as the nth x group between a particular um, constant model and uh, an equivalent, um, uh, some model that is equivalent to a certain function. We will talk about this uh, later on. But for now, uh, you can see it as uh, this right derived. So what the sharpness conjecture states is that for any fusion system F over a finite P group S, and for any Maquis function M with contrarian part M sub star, then uh, the higher limits, that is the lim N with N bigger of than one, over the centric orbit category of F of the contravariant part of uh, M are equal to zero. Here, uh, the centric orbit category of F is the full subcategory of the orbit category whose objects are uh, F-centric subgroups of S. That is, uh, whose objects are the subgroups so of S for which uh, every element isomorphic to uh, so the subgroups so P of S for which ele every element Q isomorphic to P in F satisfies that the centralizer in S of Q is contained in Q or equivalently that the centralizer in S of Q is equal to the center of Q. Um, going back to the analogy that we had before uh, with this example of uh, the fusion system F being equal to FSG, this would be equivalent to saying that the centralizer in S of P is uh, a zero P subgroup of the centralizer in G of P. So if this uh, definition is a bit uh, confusing at the beginning, have this image in mind. It's going to be, might be easier to visualize. So why do we think that this uh, conjecture is true? So the reason we think this conjecture is true is because we have uh, similar results in, uh, in the case of groups. Um, the first, well, one of the first results. Sorry. Uh, I actually have a question before, if you, if you could go back a slide. Sure. Um, I'm just curious, so which part of, the, so this is very, like, yeah. question, uh, which part of this is the, like, conjecture? So do you, oh, yeah, the is conjecture it known is... that you can write it as, like, a limit over some subcategory? No, the, or, like... the, the conjecture is that this uh, is zero. This okay, that higher is... limit is zero. Okay. Uh, it can be written. Uh, so th this part over here is defined. So without the zero, sorry. This higher limit is defined. Uh, no problem. It's a property of. Uh, we can see this as R models. Uh, we will see later on that this can be actually be seen as R models. The the categories are uh, ab abelian and means enough injectives, and these uh, higher limits are defined. Uh, this uh, restriction over here is just looking at M as a function in the this full subcategory. Yeah. And this is defined for, this full subcategory is defined for every fusion system. So the conjecture uh, really just states that these higher limits are zero. Great, thank you. Yeah. Sure, thank you for the question. Okay, so proceeding. So, to see why we think this conjecture to be true, uh, I'm gonna take a short look at the analogous case uh, for uh, groups. So for groups, we have a category for a group G, we have a category that is somehow analogous to this uh, category OFC. 
that is the orbit category of p-centric subgroups of G. Uh, if you have to think about it, it's literally uh, equivalent to the category uh, OFC when F is of the form FSG, so when F is realized by a group G. There is this result from Dwyer that states that for every finite group G and every prime pre, there is a mod P homology equivalence from the homotopical limit of the classifying spaces of the P-centric subgroups of G to the classifying space of G. Yeah. This uh, homotopical limit, I will not get into details of how it is defined, but it's basically a way of gluing together these classifying spaces. Uh, the important thing about this is that uh, from this homotopic limit, limit, we can get a spectral sequence that relates uh, higher limits of cohomologies of these classifying spaces over here with uh, cohomologies of the classifying spaces of G, of, with cohomologies of G. Um, Moreover, uh, Dwyer proved in 1998 that the higher limit over the p-centric orbit category of G of the cohomology functors are zero. With this in mind, and with the um, exact uh, sorry, the spectral sequence that I mentioned earlier, uh, it is possible to obtain as a corollary that uh, the nth cohomology of the group G with, co with coefficients in Fp is in fact isomorphic to the limit over the p-centric orbit category of G of the cohomologies of the p-centric subgroups of G. Yes? So if we look at this, this over here would be um, the analogous in group to what we want to prove, what the conjecture states, uh, the Charmers conjecture states for groups. So what happens with these other two results in the case for fusion systems? Brot, Levy, and Oliver uh, proved in 2003, and then the proof was completed in 2013 by Chermak that for every fusion system F over a P group, there exists a unique classifying space, well, unique in certain sense, classifying space BF, uh, such that there is a mod P homology equivalence between the homotopical limit over the F-centric orbit category of the classifying spaces of the F-centric subgroups of S and this classifying space, which is equivalent to the homotopical limit that, uh, sorry, the, the, the weak homology equivalence that we had before. Moreover, um, this homotopical, uh, this uh, weak mod P homology equivalence Let's do a spectral sequence as before. And we have uh, also an isomorphism between the nth cohomology of the classifying space of F with coefficients in P and the limit over the centric orbit category of the cohomologies of the eccentric uh, subgroups of S with coefficients in FP. So since uh, from this homology equivalence, we also obtain uh, a spectral sequence. And since uh, this result uh, could be obtained from that spectral sequence, if something like this happened, we kind of expect uh, this result to also happen in fusion systems. So this sharpness to also be satisfied in the case of fusion system. So that's one of the, of the reasons why we believe this sharpness uh, conjecture is satisfied. 
also we believe is satisfied because of this analogy between fusion systems and the p-local structure of uh, finite groups. So that's another reason that tells us this should happen for super, for fusion systems too. But just an indicator, not uh, not a proof. Any questions? Okay. Then I will continue into how do we approach this um, this conjecture? How is uh, this usually approached uh, to prove? Uh, a lot of the methods used uh, for uh, trying to prove this conjecture rely on a result uh, due to Jakowski and McClure that involves uh, proto maki functions. And this is one of the other reasons why we believe the sharpness conjecture to be satisfied. So what is a proto maki functor? This should be the last uh, definition that I give in, uh, in, the, in the talk, well, one of the last. What is the proto maki functor? Uh, take a category C uh, that admits pullbacks and take R a commutative ring. Then a proto maki functor over C on R is a pair of a covariant functor and a contravariant functor from C to R such that uh, the covariant and the contravariant functor coincide on the objects of C. Oops. And such that uh, for every pullback diagram in C of this form with X mapping onto Z and Y mapping onto Z, the pullback here, we obtain a commutative diagram that uh, is given by first applying the covariant functor onto, onto the map from X to Z, then applying the contravariant functor onto the map from Y to Z. And this application is the same as uh, first applying the contravariant functor on the projection from the pullback to X, and then applying the covariant functor on the projection from the pullback to Y. Remember that earlier I talked about uh, there being an equivalent to the to that horrible formula in terms of pullbacks. This would be the equivalent, and there are uh, several situations <clears throat> in which Maki functors are defined in categories in which this uh, commutative di this commutative diagram is the same as uh, saying that. Uh, as stating that formula, stating that this diagram is commutative is equivalent to stating that that formula is satisfied. Um, so what Jakowski and McClure proved in 1992 is that for any uh, proto maki functors from a category C to uh, over C, or a category C on FP with P a prime, then the higher limits of the contravariant part of these Mackie functors are zero, right? Uh, for example, example, this can be used to prove the, the results that uh, Dwyer proved in here. Since uh, this cohomology functor is a contravariant, uh, is a contravariant far of a Mackie functor over this category, which admits pullbacks. Okay, so we would like to apply this theorem in order to prove the sharpness conjecture, or at least attempt to prove the sharpness conjecture. The problem with applying this theorem is that in general, uh, Mackey functors over fusion systems are not proto Mackey functors. In fact, in general, we uh, don't even have that the orbit category admits pullbacks. So we need to find uh, a way of solving it. There have been uh, usually two methods of doing that. The first one is uh, consists in just finding those Mackie functions of a Fuji system, which are also um, proto Mackie functions and start building from that point on. This includes a theorem from Diaz and Park whom in the same paper in which they stated the conjecture, 
also prove that if I'm a key functor M over a fusion system F satisfies that is zero when evaluated uh, on any non-centric um, subgroup of S, then the sharpness conjecture is satisfied. They also proved as an extra to this um, to this result. So they were to apply this result that uh, if F is a fusion system over a P group S that contains an abelian subgroup of index P, then uh, sharpness is satisfied for the fusion system F. In order to do this, what they did was um, prove that in these situations, you could replace any Maki functor over this fusion system with a Maki functor satisfying this condition over here, satisfying that they are zero when applied on a P centrix. So using this same idea of replacing with fusion system with Maki functor that are zero when applied on P-centrics. Uh, Graziana and Marmo proved in 2022, so quite recently, that the sharpness conjecture is satisfied for all fusion systems uh, over the silo to subgroup P subgroup of the group G2P, uh, which uh, leads to a lot of families of fusion systems that are not of the form FSG. Okay, so these are the ways in which we can use this approach in order to prove uh, the sharpness conjecture for uh, certain fusion systems. The second approach uh, consists in not uh, finding Mackey functions that are uh, proto-Mackey functions, but uh, rather uh, changing directly the category OFC. That is, uh, creating a category C or finding a category C that is somehow related to the centric orbit category of F and uh, pulling back uh, our Maki functor over F to this category C. Uh, if this is done uh, well and with some tricks, it is possible to have uh, that the pull that pulling back uh, the category the Mackey functor to this category C, we obtain uh, a proto Mackey functor. And then it is uh, possible in certain situations to relate the higher limits into this other category C to the higher limits in this category of F in this F centric orbit category, in the category of uh, in the centric orbit category, sorry. So this is the case, for example of the situations in which the fusion system F is realized by a group, a finite group G. That is when F is of the form FSG. In this situation, we can take C to be equal to the P-centric orbit category of G. And we can use the results from Dwyer that we said before, this one, which also follows from the Jakowski and McClure, in order to prove that these higher limits are zero. Moreover, since uh, this category, P-centric or B-category of uh, G is equivalent to the category OFC, when F is equal to FG, we have an equivalence of limits. And that allows us to prove that um, sharpness is satisfied for realizable fusion systems this for these types of fusion systems. Another method of doing this with uh, more tricky methods is given by Henk Ligman and Lind from 2023. I think it was before our summer or right on June or so. That is so that they had the paper on archive in which uh, they built what they called a puncture group. A puncture group is a category that is very much related to the um, to the classifying space of the fusion system of F and can be mapped into 
projected into the fusion system F. Moreover, uh, these puncture groups admit uh, pullbacks. Therefore, when we take a Maki puncture that is over this category and we uh, pull it back to uh, this puncture group, we obtain um, a proto Maki puncture. So this allowed Heng Lingman and Lind to prove that in the case for fusion systems admitting puncture groups, every uh, Maki the, the sharpness conjecture was satisfied. This includes uh, a lot of uh, exotic fusion systems, as for instance, the Parker Struts fusion systems, the Sillan Parker fusion systems, and some of the Benson Solomon fusion systems, but not all. Uh, there's a question. If you yeah. could uh, just quickly explain what a punctured group is essentially. Yes, uh, a puncture group, uh, it's a bit complicated to to explain it, but uh, if we go back here to where, to this result here, we have this definition of uh, this uh, classifying space. So this classifying space is obtained as the realization of a certain category that is called the centric linking system. Uh, the puncture group is an, a generalization of the centric linking system whose objects are not only uh, the F-centric subgroups of S, but uh, also groups of S except for the identity. Um, a, there's other ways of uh, defining them. Uh, it's particular types of uh, transporter systems, and there was another uh, name that they had. But I don't have really a fast way of defining them. Just uh, imagine them for now uh, as categories that have as objects also groups of S, except for the identity, that can be mapped, uh, projected into the, the category F, except for the identity, and that kind of uh, maintain uh, informations about uh, the centralizers of the groups. I hope that answers uh, the question. Yeah, Ooh. thank you. OK. OK, so that is what a puncture group is, is this extra category. And that allows us to prove sharpness conjecture in this uh, myriad of other examples including some of the benson solomon fusion systems, but not all. OK, so any other questions so far? OK, then we can move on on different approaches to solving this conjecture. So we mentioned that uh, a lot of them are given by using this uh, result from Jakowski and McClure. But uh, th those are not all the, the methods that are being used in order to approach this conjecture. For example, we have uh, Yalsin that instead of using these results, uh, try to use some spectral sequences in order to obtain, uh, to build certain, uh, so he tried to get uh, some um, certain homologies, uh, homotopy, sorry homotopical limits that led him to certain spectral sequences that ultimately uh, led him to prove that uh, this um, higher limit of the cohomology puncture, of the, yeah, of the cohomological puncture, are in fact equivalent to higher limits over a poset category that is formed by certain fusion subsystems. And this uh, higher, over these higher limits, we are applying the cohomological puncture that apply a certain groups of automorphisms. And here, this L would be the centric leaking system. You can imagine it like that uh, puncture group that we have there. 
So he managed to translate the problem to uh, an equivalent one. And I remember uh, reading uh, his paper in which there was a part that I found hilarious that said that this problem might be equivalently hard as the previous one. But still, quite useful uh, results. Besides this, he also proved that uh, sharpness conjecture, the sharpness for fusion system, is equivalent to sharpness for uh, fusion systems such that their center is trivial, which uh, simplifies the, the conjecture. On another note, another uh, method uh, in which this was approached was by Globerman and Lind from 2023, December actually, so two months ago, in which uh, they used composition factors of uh, Hj, the cohomology functor, as a Mackey functor, and then composition functors of these composition functors, this time as contravariant functors, in order to prove that if j is small enough with respect to p, then the sharpness is satisfied for this cohomology Mackey functor. Another result is given by Carrion and Diaz, which is not uh, strictly uh, giving us something with this conjecture, but they managed to prove that higher limits for Mackey functions over Posette, which seem to be possibly related to Mackey functions over fusion systems, uh, satisfy a similar result of vanishing of higher limits. And finally, uh, we have a result due to me, uh, also more or less the same time as Global Run Lead published theirs. I put mine on archive, in which I use uh, some uh, spectral sequences and some ideas similar to the ones uh, applied from Yeltsin in order to translate uh, this problem of higher limits over the orbit category to higher limits over way smaller categories and use the, the fact that certain of these higher limits can be zero in order to prove uh, that the sharpness conjecture is satisfied for all benson solomon fusion systems and not just for the ones that are stated by, that admit puncture groups. Okay. Then in the last uh, 10 minutes, I would like to go over how I exactly proved this. Uh... Yeah, we started a bit late. You can so you can continue until uh -huh. five two. Don't don't okay. stress. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, I will take my time. Don't worry. It's a bit long to explain. So I can uh, uh, go over to doing a sketch of the proof of how the sharpness can be obtained for Mackey functors over the benson solomon fusion systems. So first of all, I mentioned earlier that uh, higher limits could be seen in a certain way as uh, X groups, certain uh, X groups. So let's see how. Uh, given a category C, and uh, ring R, any ring, doesn't have to be commutative, we can define RC uh, as the constant function from C to the category of R models that sends every object in C to the trivial R model R and every morphism to the identity. There is a result that I found in a paper due to web. I didn't mention it here, but I'm mentioning saying it that uh, states that if this category C is small enough, that is, it has finitely many objects and its morphisms are sets, then, uh, and R is a commutative ring, then the category of uh, functors from, the, from uh, C to R models is equivalent to the category of models over the uh, category ring, RC. This is uh, the ring 
whose uh, objects are linear combinations, are linear combinations of morphisms in C, and whose product is given by composition whenever its composition is defined and zero otherwise. So there is this equivalence of morphism. In particular, we have that uh, the limit of a function in here is equivalent, isomorphic, to the set of natural transformations, isomorphic as a group, sorry, uh, to the set of uh, natural transformations from the constant function uh, that sends every uh, element in C to R to uh, the function F seen as an RC model. Uh, applying uh, higher limits, uh, applying right derivatives, this tells us that the higher limit of a function F is in fact isomorphic as a group, Willian group, to the nth uh, x group over the category ring of RC and F, seen as models over RC. Yeah, this is uh, an important method because it allows us to uh, work uh, not only with injective resolutions of uh, F, it also allows us to work with injective projective resolutions of RC in order to compute this limit. But we can go on. So the important thing about this is that if we have two categories, uh, C and D, one contained in the other, then we can in, uh, define the induction of the constant function RC from C to D by tensoring it with the ring RD. Yes? So this allows us to apply a result from Simmons, uh, which is also stated by, which is also used by Yeltsin, which uh, doesn't state exactly what is written in here, but it implies it. So if we have a fusion system F and a fusion system F prime of F, then we have that uh, the nth cohomology group, the x groups, over the f-centric orbit category of f prime of the constant function with the restriction of n are isomorphic as a billion group to the nth uh, x groups over the uh, f-centric centric orbit category z of the induction of the constant function with the model n. So let's stop a second here to understand exactly what was going on. So here, uh, the f-centric orbit category is the full of orbit category uh, of uh, f prime. Sorry. It's the full subcategory of the orbit category of f prime, whose objects are f-centric subgroups of f. So they don't necessarily have to be uh, f prime centric. Here uh, we have this x n over here. If we look at this for a second, uh, we see that, and we imagine that this is a function over uh, O f prime f c. Then we can see that this thing over here is in fact the higher limit of this function. So remember that we can see this restri the restriction of this function as a function over OFC, F prime. And from the previous equivalence, we would have that this thing here would be the nth limit of this of the restriction of this function. So what this thing is allowing us is to look at uh, certain limits, higher limits of restriction of functions in here as uh, x groups over the category OFC. And it is very important 
because it allows us to work always in the category OFC. Even in the case in situations in which uh, sharpness is satisfied for this fusion system F prime, and this thing is zero. So in the situations in which sharpness is satisfied for F prime, this is zero, and this would be zero too. If zero only under certain conditions, I lied a bit here, depends on FC. Okay, so what I did during uh, in, in the paper was proving the following. I take R to be a finite ring. Uh, if you think that that's too restrictive, think of R as the ring category of uh, OFC with coefficient uh, in FP, which is a finite field. So in that case, we'd have R a finite ring. Then we take M, A, and B to be finally generated R models. In this case, in our case, they could be either uh, constant functors or uh, Maki functors. Okay. And then we take a morphism um, of our models from A to B. Okay, we can use this construction in order to obtain a, uh, um, a chain complex that has zeros everywhere, except in two places in which there it's A and B, and morphies zero everywhere, except in the morphies from A to B. So we can use this in order to get a cartan ehlerberg uh, projective resolution of this cochain complex, which is kind of a projective resolution, but for cochain complex instead of for objects which has a lot of uh, nice properties and it's uh, not so hard for it to exist and use this uh, resolution in order to obtain certain spectral sequences that give us uh, some relations between the end cohomology of the co-kernel of F and M and uh, the nth cohomologies of B and M and of A and M. So doing this, uh, what we proved is that if the nth cohomology of uh, B and M is zero for every N bigger than one, and if for every functor, uh, for every model morphism G from the image of uh, F, to any other R model N, we can lift uh, this morphism to a morphism from B to N in a way that, well, it still coincides on, uh, on the image and the compositions that go from A to the image of F and then G, and that go from A to, to B via F and then G prime commute. Then uh, the nth uh, external group of the co-kernel of F and M are equal to zero. So the idea we have here is to find situations of A, B, M, and F such that this co-kernel becomes the constant functor. This R here becomes the uh, ring category. And this M is the contravariant part of a Maki functor. And we need for this B to be related to fusion systems that uh, satisfy sharpness. So how do we do this for the case of the Benson-Solomon fusion system? In order to do this, what we have is use, uh, what we do is use a result from Levy and Oliver. And with this, I will finish. That says that the benson -Sol any Benson-Solomon fusion system is generated by two fusion subsystems, F1 and F2, that are also over the same uh, group. Then we can take the ring R to be uh, the, the category ring of OFC with coefficient in FP, and this is a final group. We can take uh, the module M to be the contravariant part of a Maki functor, seen 
as a model. And then we can take B to be this uh, direct sum of induced constant functors. So since F1 and F2 are realizable, we know from what we said before that they satisfy sharpness. Since they are also quite nice, we have that these X groups over here are actually equal to the X groups over uh, or F prime F1C and F2C. Therefore, they are equal to the higher limits. Therefore, since they satisfy sharpness, they are zero. So since these things are zero, these are also zero. And since um, the X functor is uh, additive, then we have that the nth x function x groups of these things with the contravariant part of m are also zero. And finally, uh, we need for the co-kernel of f to be equal to the constant function. So what we can do for this is that if we remember, these uh, moles over here were obtained by doing a tensor product. From using this uh, tensor product, we can uh, create a map theta that goes from this modus over here to the constant functor in OFC. And then if we just take A to be the kernel of this map and we take F to be the natural enclosure, then applying the, the first uh, isomorphism theorem, we will obtain that the co-kernel of F is actually the constant functor. Therefore, this thing over here is equivalent to this thing over here. Therefore, this theorem, this proposition, is telling us that the higher limits over the fusion system are, with the benzos along fusion system, are zero. And that would be all. Uh, thank you all for listening. I leave here some uh, resources. And if you have any question, I'm glad to hear. I'd be glad to hear them. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll